Hey, it's Coach Josh here. Welcome to Thursday's quarantine training workout. We're doing a strength training day again using uh, dumbbells and some uh, positional tools we have to get uh, muy caliente, very, very spicy. And uh, uh, my story for you today is uh, a little bit different. I, I saw this article go around the internet a few weeks ago, and one of our members even reposted it in our private group, which I, I uh, I first read it and I was like, yeah, this is a great idea. And, and then I, I realized as I thought about it a little bit further that I, I don't fully agree with the concept. Um, and you may remember this, but if you don't, it's the idea of, hey, we're all in this together in this storm of the pandemic. And uh, the article says we are all in the same storm, but we're all in different boats. And some people's boat um, has a different experience than others. Now. People who are worried about health concerns, people who are worried about financial concerns, people who are worried about uh, family separation, isolation, people who are uh, untethered and lonely. All of these different experiences that everyone else is having, um, you know, as they go through this period, it is, um, it is, it is all, it all is all unique, right? All of us humans have a, a unique experience in this world, <sighs> and and we should respect that. And that I I agree. I agree that, that we are having a unique experience, but I, I disagree that we are all um, not in the same boat. And here's why. If you remember uh, uh, Brene Brown's TED Talk a few years ago, she talked about the difference between empathy and the difference and sympathy. And sympathy, in her description, is you've fallen down a hole, and I see you fall down a hole, and I go, I'm sorry that you're in a hole. So I'm up here out of the hole, you're down there in the hole, and, it, and I'm sorry that you're going through that. And empathy is I'm going to climb down in the hole, and I'm going to go through this with you. It sucks to be cold and dark inside a hole alone, so I'm going to sit next to you in that hole and, go, and, um, and feel this, what you're feeling. I'm not doing what you're doing but I'm feeling what you are feeling. And uh, the, the easiest uh, analogy or the easiest way to describe it is uh, sympathy is um, I feel bad for you. Empathy is I feel bad with you. Now, what, I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, how can somebody know? If I've never gone through the same experience they've gone through, how, how can I know, uh, you know, how can I, how can I feel the same thing that they're feeling? And I challenge you because you don't have to, you know, go hungry. To you don't have to not have money for food to know what it's like to be hungry, right? Or even even deeper than that, to be scared. If if you're talking about someone with food insecurity, to be scared that tomorrow you're not going to eat either. And we've all had this fear, you know, in our lives before that tomorrow's not going to be okay. And you're not, you're not, you're not sip, or empathizing with the feeling of the hunger in your stomach. You're, you're empathizing with the, the fear that it isn't going to be okay. And I challenge you, I challenge each and every one of you warriors, each and every person that's listening to this or watching, I challenge you to empathize, to feel what the other people in your community are feeling. And it's not all bad. Some people are feeling good things too. Some people are getting promotions at their job and they're feeling more successful. So I challenge you to get into that boat with them, to, to feel what that person is feeling. Not do what they're doing, but feel what they're feeling and see what happens in your relationship with them and see what happens in you when you begin to actually empathize with the folks around you. All right, you have your mission. Our mission now is to stretch, to sweat, to build some muscle, to burn some fat, and feel good. Let's get this party started. I've got my water bottle. Got my music. Some little hip hop here. So first thing is, we've got a lot of uh, shoulder work to do today. So we're going to be really focused on our upper body for our warm up. So we're going to begin with some work on the floor. Now our wrists and our elbows and shoulders are quite taxed, meaning we are doing a lot of pushing with our arms and hands, and our wrists are in a lot of flexion. So we're going to begin by gently mobilizing and warming up the wrists. So I'm bobbing back and forth. 
in this four point position and I'm reaching my shoulders past my wrists, rolling forward gently, getting them nice and stretched out. And after a few repetitions of that, I'm going to take my index finger and I'm going to rotate it all the way back towards me, plant my hands, and I'm going to rock back and forth. Rock my hands back, my, my body back and forth. Stretching out those forearms. And now in this position, again, we're in that extreme loading. So we're stretching the bicep. You're, you're feeling that shoulder uh, stretching and that mobility. A lot of rotation here. So don't force it. Be gentle. Now, once you've done that, we're going to go back to that less aggressive four-point stance here. And then I'm going to do some shoulder rotation. So I'm going to, I'm going to protract and I'm going to go through great big circles. So I'm drawing these circles with my shoulders, pulling the shoulders up to the ears, down towards the, uh, or away from each other, down towards the waist, and then squeezing back to one another. So we're going these great big circles, trying to get those shoulder blades to move all the way around. Oh. Gosh, so much. So, done some shoulder rotations there, about five forward, five clockwise, five counterclockwise. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lie down and I'm going to do that nice pec and hip stretch that we did the other day. So I'm going to put my palm on the ground on my right hand. I'm going to kick my left foot over and I'm going to touch the ground with my left foot and really open up that shoulder and hip, stretching that bicep, that pec, breathing in and out gently, in through the nose, out through the mouth, letting my breath stretch my body a little bit. Five breaths here. I'm going to rotate to the other side. Plant. Five breaths here. Whew. Really enjoying this stretch. Open up the pecs, biceps, shoulders, wrists, getting all that good stuff going. Uh, now what we're going to do is put it all together. Going to use some dynamic mobilities. So I'm going to do a, uh, an inchworm, but this time, instead of doing my normal um, two feet planted, I'm going to pull one foot up off the ground, squat down, touch my hands to the floor, walk out into a plank, come all the way back, stand up, whoa, back out, plank, I'm going to do five on the right foot, kind of warming up for my single leg exercises here pretty soon. And when I come out, I want to crawl out and get that knee a little bit closer to the ground. So five on the right and five on the left. Get coming down, all the way out, coming back, one, out. Back, two, out, back, three, out, back, Woo -hoo. four. So what we're doing is, oh wow, really warming up that hip flexor <sighs> eccentrically, getting those quads warmed up for the action that we're about to be taking. Now, we've done uh, some inchworms on one foot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do some yoga windmills to stretch out the groin and hips and get those shoulders fired up for our first series, which is going to be a doozy. We're going to get out here, plant the hands, lock out that back foot, lead hand reaches forward, 
all the way up to the sky, rotating at the shoulder, spinning back down. Elbow comes down towards the inside. Switching foot, feet. Arm stretches out, all the way up, rotating back. Boom. Out, up, boom. Oh, really having a good time with this one. Oh. When you're doing these stretches, make sure that that lead knee stays punched forward and the back foot continues to press back. Two on each side. Getting that body going. Now we're going to have to start training and taking advantage of our time here to get all this work done. So we're going to do uh, pistol squats. We did single leg remaining deadlifts last week. Sorry, two days ago. Forgot what day it was. And then today we're going to do the knee dominant version, which is a single leg squat. So I'm going to be squatting down to this bench right now. And uh, the way that that looks, is got one foot out. I'm locking out. This is my, my weak leg. So I'm starting with my weak leg first. Uh, right leg up. And I'm going to pull myself down to the bench. Stand back up. Pull myself down to the bench. Touch my hips. Stand back up. Down. Up. I'm going to do five on the left. And then five on the right. That's part of my warm up here. Touch, go, touch, go. That's five. Switching it around. Touch, one, two, three, four, and oops, five. I kind of fell on that last one. We don't want to do that. So, our plank row, I've got a couple of different options for you. So if you have two dumbbells at home, uh, you can use them. If you have one dumbbell or one kettlebell, that's okay too. Uh, I want to demonstrate with one, just because a lot of people have only one implement or one tool. So I'm going to be here in the plank position, and I'm going to Get into that high plank, feet apart, and I'm going to row eight times, three, with my right arm, five, my hips aren't moving, six, seven, eight. And when I'm pulling, I'm pulling that right elbow towards that right hip. So I'm really getting everything engaged there, lats, abs, then I'm back facing down on the ground, and I'm going to do the other side. And notice I got on my fist. That was a couple of things to give my wrist a break from all that flexion, too. And it gives me a little height to pull from. So I'm here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, eight reps there, and five reps on each side with the pistol squat. We're gonna do four sets of eight, or sorry, four sets of each. Eight of the rows, five of the pistol squats. So, I'm gonna rest about 45 seconds in between, but if you have heavier weights, you might wanna rest a little bit longer. If you have lighter weights, you can go through the circuit faster, we can add reps. Instead of doing four sets of eight, you can do four sets of 12 on your rows, and that will be plenty challenging. Okay. So that was our warm up round. Now you know what you're doing. Now we're going to go right into the training, four sets. So I'm going to go back to my pistols, and when I do these, I'm 
cr pressing out on my belly. So I'm trying to create that gut tension here. And I'm gonna reach forward, lean forward, really focusing on those obliques pressing out. Two, three, four, five. Then I'm gonna go to my other side. Again, guts pressing out. And one, two, three, four, five. If you want to make it more challenging, you go deeper. Uh, if you don't have it, to, you can't go to depth, grab your weight. You can hold on to that weight and do a pistol as well um, in the goblet position, which I'll demonstrate on the next round. Going right into the plank row. All right, here I am, up on my fist, one, pulling that elbow to the hip, three, four, hips are flush, five, six, seven, eight, back to the other side, really trying to keep everything flat and parallel, nice little demonstration here, one, Hi Warriors, uh, the audio went out for Josh and so um, what we've done is we have done some voiceover um, to start off each of the new circuits. So go ahead and finish out your plank rows and your um, single leg squats and then um, when we start the next part of the circuit is when the audio will resume.
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a split squat from the goblet position and we're going to uh, do an iso hold at the end of each leg. Uh, so we're gonna do all, the, all 10 reps uh, from the split squat with our left leg. Then we're gonna hold at the bottom, not quite touching the ground. We're gonna hold at the bottom. And then from the bottom, we're going to do some shoulder exercises. So the first exercise will be the front press for 10 reps. And then when we go into our right leg, we'll do uh, 10 reps of the right leg, iso hold it at the bottom and do the tricep overhead press. So here I go, I'm gonna go ahead and begin my split squat. Um, and I'm gonna use my uh, right leg back, left leg forward, and I'm almost touching the ground in that goblet position, letting my weight lead into the, into the lead foot. And I'm gonna do 10 reps exploding through that lead leg, and I'm gonna pause on that last on that last rep, I'm gonna pause at the bottom, and then I'm gonna do my front presses holding that iso hold at the bottom. I can feel my hamstring and butt on fire as I do that, and I'm gonna be disciplined and keep that knee position low to the ground, and I'm swapping out now. I'm gonna come into the split squat uh, with the right leg forward, and this is gonna be even harder, so I'm gonna come up and down, pressing that all my weight into my forward leg, dropping down into the pad, kind of touching, but not quite. And I'm gonna do 10 reps. And then on the 10th rep, I'm gonna do a complete rep. I'm gonna drop back down and I'm gonna do a tricep overhead press, keeping that knee close to the ground on the back side. And it's extremely hard to do. And as you can see, I'm having a great time here. Uh, but once, you're, once you do all 10 reps and you're gonna pull out of the ISO hold, and it is a wonderful sensation. It is absolutely great.
All right, so we're gonna do a really fun superset here. We're gonna do a single leg or a, a half kneeling uh, curl to press, and we're gonna pick the tighter of your two hips to work on. So my right hip is pretty tight, so I'm gonna work on that. Uh, and so if you don't know which hip it is, you can alternate either one, but I know my right hip is tighter, so I'm gonna go with that, and um, that allows me to start and end with a stretch on the right hip to kind of balance out my hips. But you do you. So if you're tighter on the left side, you can go left. Um, we all have a little bit of asymmetry, and that's normal. But we're just going to kind of lean against that asymmetry while we do our curl to press. So I'm half kneeling. I'm pressing my lead leg into the floor. That's really going to help me stretch my right leg. And then I'm going to keep that back flat and then curl, press overhead, curl, press overhead. The whole time, my abs are on, pushing pressure into the lead leg and the trail leg. So I'm really stretching and opening up that hip. And then I'm uh, training, gonna do 10 curls, 10 presses, uh, back to back, really emphasizing that hip stretch. And then once I get done with the stretching my right leg, what I'll do is I'll, I'll swap it, stretch my left uh, on the next round. But in between rounds, what I'm gonna do is uh, a, a single leg glute bridge with uh, uh, from the triangle position. So it's um, it's a pretty it's a pretty decent complement to this uh, exercise because it allows us to work on that hamstring and glute on the back side while we're stretching the front side. So there's a lot of a lot of complementary activities here. Uh, it makes you feel really really good. So uh, go ahead and drape your ankle over your knee. And then you're gonna tuck your pelvis, drive through that foot on the down end, drive your butt up into the air, squeezing the glutes, opening up the hip, really getting all that benefit. I've got my fingertips on my pelvis so I can make sure my pelvis isn't rotating as I train. So I'm gonna do 10 reps on the left foot, 10 reps on the right foot, and then I'm gonna go back to my half kneeling overhead press.
Core finisher is a combination of plank up downs, starting from the elbow and coming up to the hand, coming up and down. And every time I come back to my elbow, that's one rep. So we're gonna go 10 up downs in a row. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap it, uh, go onto our back and we're going to do some hip lifts. And this makes your back feel really good because your shoulders stay on the floor, but you're kicking up to the sky, getting that thoracic spine, nice uh, mobility. So you're getting a little stretch in the upper back, working those abs, just kicking up the hips as high as you can off the ground. No problem there. I'm gonna do 10 reps, kicking up. Just ignore my stark white legs. And uh, you don't need much of a break. It's okay to get a break right now if your heart rate's to the roof. This is kind of challenging for me, but actually as I get warmed up, I, um, I like having my heart rate up a little bit more. Core training, uh, because of the muscle fibers, uh, you're, you can actually do it a little bit faster. Uh, because type 1 muscle fibers don't need as much rest. They like the stress of high volume, um, high reps, low rest periods, short rest periods. So, um, you know, if you're ready to go, go right back into it. Me, I'm just getting a little bit of oxygen here. And then um, I'm going to come back in to the core training to uh, amplify that uh, metabolic demand, aka keep my heart rate up uh, as I go. I'm going to drop right back into the plank up down and roll back into the hip lift and I'm going to do my best to take as little rest as I can while I, while I go through this finisher. One more round. So our homework is a series of Cossack stretches, uh, sorry, lunge into the Cossack stretch. And uh, four point hip mobility is working on lower body strength and flexibility, upper body strength and flexibility. So we're gonna go back and forth, really giving ourselves an opportunity to uh, open up our hips and groin, build some muscle, feels really good. Now, we're gonna do a 10 per side that gets to be quite a lot, so make sure you're focusing on technique. 
I'm warmed up, so I'm able to get lower than I usually am. So this is, feels good for me. Um, but again, let your body be your guide. When I'm done with the Cossack stretches or uh, lunges on each side, I'm gonna drop into the four point hip mobility. This is a great opportunity to take a moment and admire how good my quads look when I'm doing these. Really building up some leg strength. Four point hip mobility. So um, knees are gonna stay close to the ground. Hips are gonna be the same height as the shoulders and I'm wobbling all over the place here so you can tell I'm tired. Okay, now it's a lot of movement. And the reason why my hips are moving so much is because my knees are far away from my hands. I gotta keep it a little bit tighter I could also uh, try and lift my chest and uh, create that stability. But look, I'm kind of half in a hurry, but also just really tired. So if you're tired, slow it down a little bit. I was going fast. Um, I didn't really realize what it looked like until I saw it the, you know, on the video. But I'm um, going right from there into the plank archer. Feet apart. Now, again, I'm drawing like a bowstring. I'm pulling that, um, uh, I'm pulling my fingertips up my chest, up to the sky, following my hand with my eyes. That upper body is really rotating. Lower body is not doing quite as much. So lumbar spine is not rotating. Thoracic spine is rotating. It takes a long time. Now, that right now, you can't tell, but this is destroying me. I was about ready to uh, lose my lunch here. So if you're having a hard time with this, that makes total sense to me. You're almost done 10 reps per side, just like you did everything else. 10, 10 lunges on each side, 10 mobilities on each, uh, four point mobilities on each side, and then 10, um, 10 archers on each side. Do that and you win. All right. So, uh, that workout really kicked my ass. Hopefully it did, it did you some good too, but my point remains, right? We're all in, uh, we're all in different boats. That's sympathy. When you crawl into somebody else's boat, that's empathy. I challenge you to, to feel what somebody else is feeling. Go through, go through something with them, feel what they're feeling. You can't, you can't do what they're doing, but you can, you can listen with your heart and feel what other people are feeling. It's a tough one. I struggle with this one every day. But when you break the, break the barrier from sympathy to empathy, you give yourself uh, and you give the person that you're listening to something that is really hard to come by. And that's the feeling of not being alone. So I challenge each and every one of you to, to deploy empathy to yourself and other people and continue to bring forth the warrior within.